Quantum Rabbit, a Franken Sound podcast. Hello and welcome. Thanks for tuning in once again. A little bit of background on this episode. It's a little bit different from the previous ones, most of which have been based around my work and using that as a springboard to go into some strange places. This one is just a story or a strange place, depending how you look at it. I've got an episode I'm working on about the Virtual Busker project. It's in production, but it's not quite ready yet. There's some interviews I want to do and some bits and pieces. So in the meantime, I thought I'd use this space to have a little experiment. I was listening to the Radio Lab podcast recently, and they had a special on a guy called Joe Frank. He was an American radio personality, not very famous, uh, recently deceased, actually. He created these obscure little spoken word vignettes, I guess you'd call them, and they were very funny, very surreal, full of surprises, and I wanted to try something along those lines. Hopefully this approach to imitation is a sincere form of flattery. If you've listened to the show before, you'll know that I don't claim to know what the fuck I'm doing here, but that's half the fun. Let's keep it like that for a little while. Short warning... This is a very sad story, and it may pull on your heartstrings a little bit, depending on your personality and the environment you're listening in. Nevertheless, it is true. Everything happened. There's probably some embellishment, as usual, but not enough to make mention of. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the story. Here it is. Episode 5. A Very Bright Morning. It was a beautiful Sunday morning. As we stepped out of the house with our towels and sunscreen, I donned my new pair of sunglasses. They were dark brown, tortoise shell, and fitted my face securely. I'd recently spent more money on them than I thought was wise. At a store in the Murray Street Mall, I'd been attended to by a young female shop assistant and towards the end of our brief interaction, having almost finalised my decision, I tried them on one last time. The male shop assistant behind the counter suddenly took an interest. He looked up at me and spoke. They look good, he said. It was then I first wondered if I was being played. Was this merely a double act designed to sell more shades? And when I leave this place, would they laugh at me? It didn't matter. I'd already handed over my card to get it over with. Then, walking down the mall, I discovered the glasses made the world appear brighter than it really is, adding a golden hue to the whole creation. But I reminded myself that these shades were made by humankind. They made me want to open my eyes wider and take in more of my surroundings in beautiful high contrast. Somehow, they made me happier. At the beach, The sun was beaming across the sky. Behind golden lenses, I surveyed the world with an optimism almost as bright. And I bragged to my wife. These glasses still make the world look brighter. I was tempted to remove them, to double check. Without them, everything suddenly looked dull and grey, reminding me of a brief period of depression many years ago, when the late afternoon would somehow trigger helpless feelings of futility and nothingness. I put them back on, and looked out at the waves, and the sand, and skin. Then there was the children assembled in groups like little soldiers at Dunkirk, but noisier. 
I was there to assist with the activities of the surf club, in which my daughter was enrolled. It was still early, but a few large waves were coming in. Some parents would need to wait out there, get waist deep in the water, and make sure they didn't drown. We'd done a safety rescue course a few weeks earlier. They'd taught us to be cautious of individuals that were panicking, drowning, ready to take hold of anything or anyone to keep their own head above water, even if it meant pushing you, the rescuer, down. Don't let them approach you until they're calm, was the important lesson. Then you can get behind them, swim with them to shore, floating on their back. Otherwise, it could be your life on the line. And who would you save then? The logic was sound. Even in the case of children who might overwhelm you with numbers, you may need to lean back and kick them away to survive. My toes curled up and grabbed the sand as I took my first steps into the surf. I was still wearing the glasses, but they were safe. When a larger wave came, I took them off my face, dived down and surfaced on the other side before putting them back on. Another two waves came through, not as big. I drifted over them. Meanwhile, the kids had started to swim out in groups. Then a third wave, slightly larger, but not as big as the first. Again, I let myself float over it. As the crest began to crumble, the lip curled gently over my head as I faced away towards the shore. And the glasses were gone. I felt them brush against my arm as they sank. Both arms darted about wildly for a moment, to no avail. I couldn't quite touch the sand with my feet now. I'd fucked up. As I looked down into the cloudiness around me, I remembered that I was supposed to be helping watch the kids. Hey kid, let me know if you find a pair of sunglasses. I didn't say that. But as I tried to focus on the swimmers, I pretended not to be looking down into the water for my glasses. My legs stretched out as my toes tried to find the bottom, clutching at weeds, shells and jelly creatures. In all of this, I began to question, had I been a party to an act of self-sabotage? It made sense when I thought about it. I've lost or broken every pair of sunglasses I've ever owned. I'd sometimes put them down in a public place and forget about them. Or place them in a bag without protection, leaving them irreparably damaged. In the case of the most expensive pair I ever owned, I physically bent them until they broke, while trying to fix a perceived unevenness in the arms. With this pair, I'd willingly walked into the ocean with them, knowing the risks. I love those glasses. Why did I push them away? Did I somehow feel I didn't deserve them? That I wasn't worthy? What does it all mean? Who am I? It was time for this mad cycle to stop. That evening I got online and ordered eight pairs of polarised men's fashion glasses in a range of styles from a Chinese megastore. They averaged about $10 each. Even if one or two pairs fail to arrive, I should still be ahead of the game next time I lose my sonnies. <laughs>